Have you ever wondered why you have grandparents, but your fish doesn't? It is uncommon for animals to live after they have offspring. However, humans have evolved to live 30, 40, or even 50 years after they are unable to have any more children. Scientists have come up with many questions to respond to these observations. Basically, they all come down to, why do humans live so long after we reproduce? Let's start with a bit of background information. Darwin described fitness as the extent to which you are able to pass on your genes to future generations. Therefore, the more offspring you produce, the more fit you will be. In many species of animals, after their first reproductive event is complete and their offspring have been successfully born, the parents actually die, which ultimately makes sense as they have completed their duties as individuals. Species that do this, and therefore die after they reproduce once, are called semelparous species. We see this in species of fish and frogs. However, there is another type of species, called iteroparous species, that reproduce more than once in their life and continue to live after reproduction, like humans, for example. So how does this all relate to why humans live so long after we reproduce? Well, humans are a case of extreme iteroparity, meaning that we produce over a long period of time and live long after we reproduce. Since according to Darwinian fitness, our main evolutionary goal is to reproduce. So it is curious that we continue to live for years after our reproductive and evolutionary success. Scientists have come up with various hypotheses to explain why we live so long after we have offspring. The first of these is the grandmother hypothesis. This theory suggests that having grandparents, and therefore are living after being able to reproduce, is still a fitness benefit. Though the grandparent is unable to reproduce themselves, they can bring resources to their family, which ensures that their genes will stay alive. And, as we remember from Darwinian fitness definition, ensuring that your genes are passed down through generations is the main goal of an individual. Evidence for the grandmother hypothesis can be seen in the Hadza people of northern Tanzania, Africa. This group is the last surviving culture of hunter-gatherers. The elderly women in this group spend more time gathering food for their families than the younger women. Anthropologists concluded that the food the grandmothers gathered contributed to their grandchildren's survival, therefore making sure that their genes get passed down through generations. A second hypothesis is that of the antagonistic pleiotropy hypothesis. Pleiotropy is a phenomenon where a gene controls for more than one trait in an organism. Antagonistic pleiotropy is when one gene controls for more than one trait, but one trait is beneficial to the organism, while the other is detrimental. This theory suggests that a gene that might allow for early reproduction in life will be linked with earlier menopause. By getting menopause earlier in life, the amount of time that a human is alive without being able to reproduce is greater. Over time, this trait could have been selected for more and more, increasing the amount of time that a human would be alive without being able to reproduce. Evidence for this hypothesis is seen in a study that looks at follicle depletion in women. Follicles are what releases the egg in the ovaries. It is suggested that follicle depletion earlier in life can help regulate menstrual cycles. However, this will lead to earlier menopause. Therefore, follicle depletion benefits the woman earlier in her reproductive years but shortens the time for which she can reproduce, making the time where she is alive but unable to have children greater. These are only a few of the hypotheses that try to explain why humans live so long after their reproductive age, although the answer to this question is still very unclear. Even though the grandmother hypothesis is the most popular and heavily supported, there are still gaps in this explanation. The problem with the grandmother hypothesis and the antagonistic pleiotropy hypothesis is that the benefits do not appear big enough to ever favor stopping breeding between the ages of 40 and 50. Ideally, we need to find a hypothesis that can combine all the different theories on this topic together. Zorze Medvedev comprised a list of over 300 theories relating to aging back in 1990, and that list continues to grow today. Further research of the trade-offs and fitness benefits of living so long could help increase our understanding as to why humans are so unique in displaying extreme iteroparity.
Humans living long past the reproductive age have some greater impacts on society. As we are living longer and longer, this is straining the public health sector. Currently, there is a shortage of healthcare facilities and physicians available for the aging demographic. However, as medical care for seniors needs to be increased, this requires a lot of funding that is not always available. With further research, scientists hope to gain a better understanding of the evolutionary causes of aging. If you're interested in learning more about the evolutionary reasons for aging, check out our great resources.